Welcome back to Tharjas Academy. Today we're going to watch one of the exciting games from the Candidates Tournament. Yeah, hi to everyone. So today we're going to watch a game that was played between Jan Nepomnyshi and uh, Kirill Alexeyenko. Let's say several words about Candidates Tournaments. Yeah, it's probably one of the most interesting tournaments. Yeah, uh, because a winner can uh, going to play a match against Magnus Carlsen. And a winner of the tournament has all chances to become a new world chess champion. Yeah. So uh, this game is very interesting because uh, Jan Nepomnyshi, he leads the tournament and uh, this game was very important uh, for him. Yeah. So you will see the result of this game at the end of the video. So let's see if he got a win. So let's start. Four, knight of six. Bishop g2, d5. So we can see that uh, there is now Catalon on the chessboard, yeah? So white doesn't hurry up with playing d4, yeah? Usually white uh, sometimes even plays d3. So knight f3, yeah? Black captures the pawn, and uh, in this position you will see a typical plan how you can get the pawn back, yeah? So in two moves. It's a queen check on a4, yeah? And after black protects the king, uh, queen just captures the pawn. Uh, I think it would be nice if we say several words, yeah, for beginners, why, for example, black doesn't play knight c6 in this position, yeah? Uh, first of all, you should remember that, uh, especially in the closed openings, uh, this pawn shouldn't stay on c7, yeah? In most of the positions, black gonna move the pawn to c6 or maybe to c5. So when you want to develop your knight on c6, you have to think twice, yeah, because you block your c7 pawn. And just uh, in case uh, about this position, yeah, I would say that knight c6 is not a good plan because white has a nice answer, knight e5, yeah? So you see that there are three attacking pieces and I think that it's just probably impossible for black to <laughs> protect this knight, yeah? So white gets a pawn back and uh, like c pawn. And the knight can't win. capture since it's pinned. Yeah, of course. So unfortunately knight can't capture. Yeah, so for example, if bishop d7, yeah, I, I don't think that it's so good. Yeah, so we just get position like this. So uh, this position doesn't look good for black. So that's why knight d7 was played. Uh, white just gets the pawn, queen takes c4, a6, yeah. Also a typical plan, you can see some arrows on the chessboard. So black just wants to play b5, yeah, and then develop the bishop to b7. So in this position, it's important for black to play b5 with tempo, yeah? So white moves the queen and then black has enough time to develop the bishop. Uh, so that's why the next move for white wouldn't be a surprise for you. Yeah, so why just played queen c2? What is the plan? Yeah, if you want to play uh, chess successful, you shouldn't think just about plans for yourself. You also should think about plans for your opponent, right? So if you know that the plan for black is to play b5, yeah, you want to stop this plan. You move the queen to c2, yeah? And because now, of now, course... Because now if you play b5, then the knight can move and make discovered attack on the rook. Yeah, of course. So in this position, b5 wouldn't be a mistake for black, yeah? So because white just plays knight d4, yeah? The plan is to get to c6, it looks like a weak square, yeah? Uh, it's not good for black just to move the rook away to b8, yeah? Because of the fork. So you see that uh, both of the you can win are attacked. Yeah. So, um, and if black after knight d4 plays knight d5, for example, yeah, position is also not so uh, good because now white has a strong knight on c6, yeah. Uh, and like, of course, it couldn't be good for black. Yeah, after, uh, even after queen f6, yeah. Castle, bishop b7, d4, white's position is very nice and it's much better. Yeah, c7 looks like a backward pawn, uh, it's a weak pawn. And to be honest, the bishop on b7 is not so good, right? And if black tries to um, take, to capture the knight with the bishop, yeah, to trade this light square bishop to a knight, it's all, it also would be very good for white because then a white light square bishop would be very powerful. Yeah. So that's why after queen c2, I hope that it, it's clear for you why b5 is not a good plan, yeah? So black played c5 first, yeah? You see uh, now one more time, so it was good that this pawn is not blocked, yeah. So after this knight c3 was played, 
Uh, and you know, in this position, uh, it's too simple to make a mistake. So uh, this variation, uh, yeah, of Neo Catalan, it's very tricky. So if you're gonna play just uh, and follow some typical principles of the opening, yeah, like development, control in the center, yeah, uh, it's easy to get into a trouble. So in this position, Alexeyenko made uh, not the best move. He just played bishop e7. Yeah, you may think that why everything is okay. So black develops a dark square bishop, but actually not. Uh, this move is not good. Uh, probably you could see, uh, yeah, in previous variations that it's not so simple for black to develop the light square bishop. Yeah. You can see that this diagonal yeah, is blocked for the bishop. So of course, black has to take care about uh, moving the bishop to b7. At this point, uh, instead of bishop e7, uh, the best uh, move for black would be queen to c7. Yeah, because after this, black has a plan to play b6 or b5, and then to play bishop b7, because bishop would be protected by the queen. Yeah, so let us give you a variation. So for example, if white castles, Black plays b6, yeah, and now knight e5 is not a problem anymore because black has enough time to play bishop to b7, right? So, and position looks very good for black. So that's why queen c7 would be a nice plan. Yeah, so let's go back. Yeah, bishop e7, let's see why this move is not uh, the best. So in this position, Nipomne, she just castled and Alexenko also castled, but I have a question for you. So let's take this move back and let's discuss um, maybe now it's still possible for black to play b5. So what do you think, Tara? Would it be a good move? I think it wouldn't be a very good move. Mm -hmm. Why? Knight e5. Yeah, of course. So now white still has a discovered attack. Yeah, white uses this diagonal. So knight goes to e5, yeah, attacking the rook. And if in this position black plays rook b8, yeah, we just play knight c6. So forking the rook and the queen. Yeah, so unfortunately now black doesn't have this possibility to play b5 and finish development uh, on the queen side. So castle, yeah, d4. Yeah, usually it's also a typical plan. If you see that uh, you can develop your pieces faster than your opponent, it should be good for you to open position, yeah? And of course, white also wants to develop the dark square bishop. So that's why d4. Captures, yeah, knight captures. And you see that now uh, position for white is very good. So black has some problems. So first of all, white has a powerful light square bishop and black has not a good bishop on c8 so it's really difficult to develop this bishop yeah and you can see you can see the problems of playing bishop e7 but yeah of course small positional mistake it caused some problems for black yeah you're it's right Tara. got advantage mm -hmm. yeah thank you so uh in this position black plays uh queen c7 yeah but probably it's a little bit too late <laughs> to develop uh, the queen to c7 yeah so we can just try to improve our position yeah so we have an open file yeah so just let's control it why not so rook d1 yeah black did the same rook d8 and now it's time to develop the dark square bishop yeah so let's think where would be a good place for it tara what do you think about bishop to d2 I think it's not very active there. Okay. What about bishop g5, for example? So, I think we can't That's say that move. bishop would be useful there. Yeah, so the knight is protected. Uh, it's not a pin, so yeah, not the best place. Uh, what about bishop f4? Then there's the fork of e5. Mm-hmm. So black plays e5 in this position, yeah? Okay, so where should we move the bishop? Yeah, it's not d2, it's not f4, it's not g5. So what else can we do? Maybe e3. Yeah, so we play a bishop to e3. Uh, it's uh, not a problem at all that white blocks the pawn on e2 in this position because it's not so important to move it, yeah? And of course, uh, this diagonal looks very good for the bishop. So yeah, bishop is 3 is a nice plan. And if you played e3, if you played your pawn to e3, it would block that bishop. It yeah. Would block 
so. Of course, it's not good. And now you see that light squares look weak, yeah? And of course, of course, white doesn't have plan to play e4. So this bishop is such a good piece in white's position. So of course, white doesn't want to block it. Yeah, so that's why bishop is three. Uh, so in the game, Alexeyenko played knight b6, yeah, so finally he wants to develop his bishop to d7. Uh, but I think it also would be very good for us to discuss, yeah, what if, uh, sometimes it could be a typical plan, yeah, for these types of the positions when you have a pawn pinned with a rook, yeah? So let's discuss what happens if black plays rook b8. So does it help in this position, yeah? Uh, what is the plan? To probably, uh, probably to play b5. Yeah, and then finally to develop the bishop to b7. Um, I think that white can just follow the plan, yeah, improve position uh, of the rook, yeah, rook to c1, why not? And uh, as for me, b5 doesn't look like a good plan. So what can white do after b5? Tara, what do you think? And there's a fork, knight c6. Yeah, of course, knight c6. So unfortunately, rook b8 doesn't help to improve, uh, doesn't help black to improve the position, right? So that's why knight b6 was played. So we still try to improve position, yeah, to control an open file, play rook a to c1. And also maybe we can think about some uh, sacrifices, some combinations, yeah, with a knight on d5. Um, so Alexeyenko played e5, attacking the knight, yeah? So let's think where to move the knight, like, do you want to move it back to b3 to the queen's side, to f3 to block your bishop, or maybe to f5? So let's discuss which move would be better for white in this position. Maybe to f5. Yeah, of course. So we want to move our pieces forward. Yeah, of course, sometimes we can also move them back, but I don't think that b3 would be a good position for the knight. Of course, I don't want to block my bishop, so that's why knight f5, yeah, to the king side. Um, yeah, black uh, captures with a bishop, yeah. So finally, you may think that, okay, no problems for black because there is no this uh, bad bishop anymore. Yeah, but now uh, white light square bishop becomes too powerful, yeah? And the pawn on b7 is weak, and by the way, the pawn on e5 is also looks a little bit weak. So let's see what happens after this. Yeah, so black uh, tries to improve position of the knight, yeah, and plays knight c4. It's also a fork, yeah? The knight is attacking the pawn on b2, and the bishop on e3. I think that it's even more important for black in this position to capture the dark square bishop with a knight, yeah? And after this exchange, white gets two isolated doubled pawns, yeah, which is not good. So of course, white doesn't want to lose this bishop, yeah, to trade it to the knight and to uh, like to get doubled isolated pawns. So that's why white plays bishop to g5, yeah? Uh, Tara, could you explain to us uh, what is the possible plan after bishop g5? So what uh, white can do after this? So I think that they played bishop g5. That was a good spot for the bishop because he didn't want the pawns to be doubled by the knight taking it. And if you move the bishop back to d2, then the knight will capture. Yeah, of course. So yeah. when you play bishop, when you play bishop g5, Maybe the plan is to capture the knight on f6, mm -hmm. and later you play knight d5. Yeah, of course, you can try to play knight d5, yeah? And also, I would say that knight on f6 is a pretty good defender of the position of the black king, right? So when we trade the bishop to a knight, so less defenders for the king, which is good for us. So uh, black decided to trade rooks, yeah? And interesting moment in the game. So uh, in this position, we have a choice. We can capture the rook with a knight or with a rook, yeah? Um, you may think that taking with a rook is better, yeah? Because we don't move the knight back. But in this position, uh, for white, it's better to capture with a knight, yeah? Because now c file is open for the rook and the knight on c4 is pinned. So, and white can try to use the spin. Yeah, it's gonna improve white's position. So sometimes we have to move the pieces back. Yeah, and sometimes it even could be good for our position. So black played rook to d8, yeah. And Nipopnia, she traded his bishop to a knight, yeah? But of course, you may think, uh, why didn't he play b3 in this position, yeah? So b3 looks like a good move, yeah? Because we pin the knight. 
but after this, black has a very interesting answer. It's queen a5. Yeah, you see that the first rank is uh, a little bit unprotected for white, yeah? And uh, the queen just wants to get to e1 in this position. Yeah, so if we capture the knight, yeah, for example, with a pawn, queen gets to e1, yeah? And then uh, black just captures um, the knight, yeah? So that's why uh, white didn't play b3. So bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, yeah. And now maybe it's time to make some problems for the black king. So Tara, what ideas do you have? What can white do in this position? Maybe the bishop can go to e4. Yeah, of course. You said during the whole game, we just wanted to use the bishop on this diagonal, yeah, h1, a8. But uh, finally, we move it to e4, and now you see that we can also make problems uh, for the pawn on h7, yeah? So we want to uh, improve our attack at the king side. Uh, so in the game, uh, Alexenka played queen a5, yeah? It's also a very important moment. So even if you realize that your position is not so good and your opponent has an attack, uh, uh, try not to play too passive, yeah? Try also to make some problems, yeah? So black has a plan to get to one to make some problems for the white king, yeah? Take the knight on d1. And maybe we can discuss what happens if black plays, yeah, g6 first, yeah? It's not a good move because now the bishop is unprotected. Yeah, so probably uh, the more interesting variation in this position is h6, yeah? Uh, so after this, um, White has an interesting creation, queen h7, king f8, yeah, knight is three. So we pin the black knight on c4, yeah. Um, of course, if black plays b5, we can probably play b3 and we still get the knight. Yeah, but uh, black has a tricky answer, knight takes a three. And now let's call together what happens uh, if uh, in this position white captures the queen. So Tara, is it a good move to take the queen immediately? It's a bad move because then whip d1. Yeah, because now black just mates in one move, yeah? So that's why it's very important not to forget about intermediate moves, yeah? And white has to play uh, queen h8 first, and after king g7, uh, the rook captures the queen with check, yeah? So interesting variation. Uh, but let's go back to the game, yeah? Uh, as you remember, black didn't play h6, when a5 was played, yeah, with the idea to get to e1. So, of course, white doesn't want the black queen to get at the first rank. So, uh, that's why white played knight c3, yeah, black in the diagonal. So, uh, black still didn't play h6, played king f8, yeah. So, uh, let's also discuss a variation with h6, yeah. Let's think, Tara, how uh, white can improve this position, yeah, how white can make some problems for the king, maybe some checkmates ideas. So maybe it would be nice to control e7 in this position. Maybe knight d5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so white has a very nice answer, knight to d5. Mm, for the first look, you might think that this move is not good, yeah? Uh, because uh, black uh, has a plan, yeah? To trade the rook uh, for two pieces, right? Um, and usually two pieces are more powerful uh, than the rook, yeah? But uh, in this position, white has a double attack. So Tara, can you find it, please? The double attack would be queen c8. Yeah, of course. So white just plays queen c8 in this position, yeah? And uh, so white wins an exchange. So, yeah, this is one more reason why black didn't play h6 in this position, yeah, and Alexeyenko played uh, king f8. Okay, so white still plays knight d5, yeah? Uh, black answered b5, but, um, okay, let's check if you watched the video carefully, yeah? So what happens if the rook takes? Bishop takes. Okay, queen takes. Queen c8. Yeah, so you see, the same combination that we discussed just same several minutes ago. Yeah, okay. So let's go back, knight d5. Yeah, black decided to protect uh, the knight with a pawn. 
So finally, yeah, you, you could wait for this move, uh, yeah, till the long time. So uh, finally, queen captures uh, the pawn on h7, yeah? And of course, white wants to get to h8. So rook takes d5, bishop takes d5, yeah, but don't hurry up. Black didn't uh, sacrifice an exchange in this position, yeah? Because now black uh, also has a double attack. So let's try to find it, yeah? So how black can get some material back in this position? Maybe you can play queen d2, attacking the rook and the bishop. Yeah, of course. So queen d2 was played, yeah? Uh, in this position, uh, of course, white wants to move the rook away. So rook takes c4, pawn takes c4. And in this position, white played e4. Yeah, protecting the bishop and at the same time moving the pawn away from e2. But I'm just curious, why didn't Nipomnia she capture the pawn with the bishop? Because then queen c1. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> so many double attacks in this game. Yeah, possible double attacks, I would say. Yeah, and you see that black gets the bishop. So let's go back to e4, yeah, to the positions that happened in a game. Black captures the pawn, yeah. We still don't take the pawn in this position, yeah, because it's still possible to play queen c1 and get the bishop. So uh, in this end game, you see that uh, you can see the difference between uh, white bishop and black bishop, yeah. So this light square bishop is very powerful, yeah. And uh, this dark square bishop looks a little bit like a big pawn, yeah? Of course, uh, black doesn't have enough time to improve its position because white uh, makes problems for the king. So queen h8, king is seven, and now a uh, very nice move for the queen, queen c8, yeah? So what is the plan? To get to the seventh rank and capture the pawn on f7, yeah? And at the same time, we also don't forget about the pawn on c4, yeah? So if black protects the seventh rank, yeah, we get the pawn back. So queen b6 was played. Of course, we capture the pawn. Yeah, free pawn, why not to take? And now we want to get the pawn on f7. So um, uh, Alexeyenko tried his last chance. Yeah, I would say it's it his last chance. So he just wanted uh, to trade queens, yeah, and get an end game with opposite color colored bishops. Yeah, so uh, in this position, of course, black has some chances for a draw, yeah. And uh, if white plays bishop takes f7, yeah, maybe black still has some chances, yeah, to make a draw in this position, yeah, because even with two extra pawns, sometimes it's not so easy to win. But to be honest, I think that uh, white still have, uh, still has all chances to win this end game, yeah. So last try, yeah. So also you can try to memorize that usually opposite colored bishops, yeah, uh, gives, uh, give you more chances to make a draw. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> queen d7, yeah, queen c5 was played. Yeah, sorry, I think that I skipped several moves. Yeah, sorry. So uh, queen b5, yeah, now you understand why Nepomnishi didn't trade queens in this position. So he played queen c7. Uh, of course, king doesn't move anywhere, yeah, because black doesn't want to lose the pawn on f7. So queen uh, d7 was played, queen c5 check, and in this position, black resigned, yeah? So, of course, something unusual for beginners, yeah, but for top, uh, like, for top grandmasters, uh, like, no one wants to play a losing endgame, yeah? So, uh, but let's discuss, yeah, let's spend several minutes on uh, discussing why actually black resigned, yeah? So after queen d6, yeah, let's think how white can get um, one more extra pawn, yeah? So Tara, what checks do you see? Queen a7. Of course, queen goes to a7, yeah? The plan is to capture the pawn on f7 or a6. To be honest, I don't think that black will gi give this pawn. Probably black gonna play queen d7, queen takes a6, yeah? So looks like an absolutely winning end game for white. Uh, what about king e8? <laughs> I think a very nice move. <laughs> white would be happy if black did this. Can you win the queen with bishop c6? Yeah, of course. So we can get the queen. Yeah, and uh, what about king d8? Yeah, I think we still can get an extra pawn in this position. 
And by the way, uh, not to trade queens, yeah? So to get the pawn, but without queens exchange. So Tara, what ideas do you have? Queen a5. Queen a5. Queen a5, yeah, I think so. Queen a5, queen b6, yeah, both of the smooth looks look good. So you're right. Yeah, so very interesting game. And of course, it was uh, important for Nepomniachi to win this game. He still leads the tournament. And who knows, maybe he will gonna play, uh, he will play against Magnus. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this game. What do you think the main things they can learn from, the, from this game? Uh, so sometimes, yeah, in chess and also in life, we have, uh, we shouldn't just follow typical ideas. Yeah, sometimes we have to, uh, like, to think unusual, yeah? So probably Alexeyenko got into trouble when he played bishop e7 in the opening. Yeah, it was a typical move, uh, but in some positions, yeah, we shouldn't, like, uh, think, play chess in general, yeah, follow just opening principles. Sometimes we have just to look deeper into the position. So in this variation of the opening, yeah, let's go back a little. Uh, of course, for black, it was uh, more important to, like, to develop the light square bishop first instead of the dark square bishop. So that's why, yeah, in this position, bishop e7 wasn't the best move, yeah. So queen c7 and then bishop b7 would be much better. And again, you, you just see an example of the game, yeah, what happens when you uh, don't finish your development in the opening, yeah. So development, development, and one more time development. <laughs> and you can see how white targeted how white targeted those weaknesses so he get, so he could get those so he could get advantage yeah of course i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please make sure to like subscribe and share this video to others and i'll see you on my next video bye bye